One of the most irritating things to me about the 2020 Democratic Party primary, aside from the fact that we lost, obviously, is that Elizabeth Warren and her supporters till this day will not admit that she backed away from Medicare for All. Anyone who says she backed away from Medicare for All, according to her stance, is apparently lying. They're gaslighting. But that's not true. She did, in fact, back away from Medicare for All on the campaign trail. She instead decided to support a public option and prioritize that over Medicare for All and said within her third year, after you know a sitting president would likely lose some steam, lose one of the houses of Congress, then she would propose Medicare for All after she had a gigantic healthcare reform battle for the public option. She's going to wage a second healthcare battle within her first term as president. Like, nobody believes this. So she pivoted away from Medicare for All, but she, you know, cloaked that flip-flop in technocratic, wonky language to hide the fact that she was, in fact, moving away from Medicare for All. And nobody was willing to admit that. But now, finally, she is very explicitly pivoting away from Medicare for All. And she's making it official. Which uh, makes me feel a little bit vindicated. Because when I said that Elizabeth Warren was moving away from Medicare for All, I wasn't doing it because I was trying to tank her campaign to help elevate Bernie Sanders. It's because I am glued to policy specifics. I learned to decode doublespeak from politicians because when I hear... You know, any sense that they're going to move away from a really bold policy that requires a lot of fight and effort to accomplish, you've got to know that they're not serious. So I think that that was obvious. And honestly, I don't believe that Elizabeth Warren supporters think that she actually was committed to Medicare for all. I think they were just lying to themselves or it was cognitive dissonance. But either way, now she's explicitly moving away from Medicare for all and she's doing it <laughs> unsurprisingly for um, self-aggrandizing reasons, because she's trying to make an appeal, a pitch to Joe Biden to be VP. And she's basically sending a signal to him that she's going to be willing to compromise on her ideals in order to, you know, attain power. And this kind of, I think, shows you why arguments from people like Mehdi Hassan about why selecting her as a VP would be a concession to the left were completely meaningless from the get-go because Elizabeth Warren isn't going to pressure Biden to move left. He's going to pressure her to move center. She's a political chameleon and she will adapt to what Joe Biden is, you know, offering. So if he says we're doing, I don't know, Medicare at 55, she will enthusiastically promote that with a gigantic smile on her face. She's not going to push him to do anything. She's not the one who, you know, leads. She's a follower. She's proven that. But for some more details on this, we go to Politico's Alex Thompson, who explains, in the thick of primary season, Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden brawled over Medicare for All. He called her approach angry, elitist, condescending. She shot back. Anyone who defends the healthcare status quo with industry talking points is running in the wrong presidential primary. Six months later, with Biden the presumptive Democratic nominee and Warren in the running for VP, she is striking a more harmonious chord. I think right now, people want to see improvements in our healthcare system, and that means strengthening the Affordable Care Act, she told students at the University of Chicago's Institute of Politics this week, while adding that she still wants to get to single payer, eventually. The shift is the latest public signal Warren has sent Biden's way in recent weeks that she wants the job of vice president and wants Biden to see her as a loyal governing partner despite their past clashes, which go back decades. Warren is trying to demonstrate her value to a future Biden administration and interest in the job without too explicitly campaigning for it, which could backfire. The Progressive Change Campaign Committee, a top Warren booster, has been muted on the idea of her being chosen as vice president, instead trying to draw attention to her legislative and policy work surrounding the coronavirus. Taking no chances, Warren has been trying to showcase her potential political upside. She deployed her robust email list to raise money for Biden after she formally endorsed him. I never had as many contributors until she endorsed me, Biden said in a joint donor call with Warren that the campaign posted online Sunday. Warren's been plugging Biden's website in media appearances, and in case her enthusiasm for a Biden presidency wasn't apparent, her team produced a video lauding Biden's implementation of the 2009 stimulus package. So, I mean, this is just pathetic. She's shameless. And on top of 
all of this, she released a video to Twitter where she's calling people who donated to Joe Biden, as she did uh, when people donated to her campaign throughout the course of the Democratic Party primary. So, I mean, she's willing to do anything. She is an opportunist, a, a rank careerist, and she's shown more than anything, she doesn't actually care about getting policies implemented. She just wants power. That's it. It's embarrassing. And people will make the counter argument, well, Mike, don't you think that progressives need power if we want any of our policies codified into law? Well, sure, but you don't get those policies enacted if you compromise before you're even selected, right? If Elizabeth Warren is already showing a willingness to cave on all of her principles, what good would she be to the left as Joe Biden's vice president? The answer is she wouldn't be any good to us. She would maybe influence him here and there. But overall, she's going to toe the party line. She's going to do exactly what Joe Biden wants, not the other way around. So, you know, it's just, to me, I, I feel like anyone who was really pushing hard for Elizabeth Warren to be his VP was either being intentionally obtuse and gaslighting people or just painfully naive, painfully naive. And um, we learn about how Elizabeth Warren is selling out all of her ideals and principles at a time when Joe Biden just asked Amy Klobuchar, not Elizabeth Warren, to undergo extensive vetting to be his running mate, which means he is very seriously considering Amy Klobuchar to be his VP. It's not a foregone conclusion yet, but this is a really good sign in her favor. So she got played by Hillary Clinton in 2016, and now she's getting played by Joe Biden in 2020. Why would he choose you? Why would you think that he would choose you? Because even if we all know that Elizabeth Warren doesn't really stand for anything, she's still too radical for Wall Street, which contributes to Joe Biden's campaign. So why would he choose you? I mean, you can say he's willing to make it seem as if, you know, he wants to appeal to, to the left and this is about optics, but he's made it very clear he doesn't really have that much, much interest in appealing to the left, right? He doesn't. The task forces are probably his way of saying, this is what you get. Take it or leave it. That's all I'm doing to reach out to Bernie Sanders supporters and, you know, the collective left. Um, so <laughs> it's just, it's honestly, it's sad that she thinks she even has a chance at being his VP. And if he chooses her, you know, I'll stand corrected, right? I'll eat crow. I'll, I'll admit that I was wrong here. But she's doing all of this and it's going to amount to nothing. And that's the same thing that happened in 2016, as I alluded to. You know, she with, withheld her endorsement of Bernie Sanders. And then as soon as, you know, the primary was, not even when it was over. I mean, Bernie wasn't technically mathematically eliminated when she endorsed Hillary Clinton. But the fake enthusiasm, you know, it just put it over the top. And we all know now, based on articles from insiders, that she was trying to jockey for a VP position. It's so sad. And look. The thing about Elizabeth Warren and why I'm now firmly of the belief that we have to primary her in 2024 is because she's bad for the left. She is bad for the left. And I say that because, first of all, when it comes to policies that we all care deeply about, like Medicare for All, she did a disservice to that in 2020. She did a huge disservice to that. Um, by coming up with these types of regressive head taxes to fund Medicare for all? No. But, you know, if she chooses to run again in 2024, if Joe Biden doesn't win, I mean, there's not going to be very many options, I'm assuming, for progressives. And there's going to be a potential division on the progressive left created by Elizabeth Warren, where a lot of people will, you know, reluctantly support her because there's not really any other options. You know, she's the best that we can get you know, not knowing what the field will look like. And then other portions like myself of the left aren't going to be willing to support her because we know that she doesn't believe in anything. Like any policy she talks about, she's saying it because it's politically expedient, but she will change with the political winds. I mean, I don't know what more she has to do to prove to you that she doesn't believe in anything and she's just an opportunist. Like what more does she have to do? Does she have to put it in writing for people that I am an opportunist, I'm an opportunist, I believe in nothing. Sure. You know, I prefer progressive policies probably, but I'm not going to, you know, do anything that would jeopardize me getting power. I don't know what more you want. Elizabeth Warren is not the real deal and I think the people in Massachusetts they deserve better than her. So yes, she needs to be primaried. Um, it's going to be a long shot. That primary challenger has, you know, his or her work cut out for them. 
but it's something that needs to happen because you can't just betray the left in such, you know, a huge way that she did and not have any repercussions. Like, she shouldn't be rewarded for this. She hurt the left collectively in 2020, and she shouldn't be rewarded. We shouldn't be under this illusion that she's somehow going to help push Biden left if he ever would choose her as VP. That's not going to happen, and he's not even going to pick her as VP. So, I mean, she just... I don't know what else to say. She has thoroughly embarrassed herself and discredited herself. And I just really hope that the left collectively stands strong and they don't fall for her. They don't get duped by her again. She's burnt that bridge in 2020 to the progressive left. So don't let her divide us if she ever chooses to run again. Um, we all have to acknowledge what we're getting with Elizabeth Warren. Maybe to her core, she believes in progressive policies, but she's just... She doesn't have the spine needed to fight for them, which makes her effectively useless to the left. Because if you're just going to go along with centrists, then what good are you to us? Like, if you're not going to fight for left-wing policies, then you are no good to us.